Welcome back. Last time we got this Teltonica RUT955 connected up to the network, with one connected to the LAN and one connected to the WAN. We then used SSH to connect as root into this device so we had a shell, so we could understand how it's working. Now one of the things that interests me about this device is if we flip it over and have a look, there's a label containing what is quite commonly called personalization information. So this is unique information to this device. So it's got the serial number, the IME, the identifier of the cellular chipset, the modem, the LAN MAC address, the Wi-Fi SSID, RUT955CAFC. Now notice that that is just one character different from the LAN MAC address. I'm almost certain that's going to be pulled from the Wi-Fi MAC address um, there. But then we've got this password, which is SE1I8Q5R. So it's eight characters long, but it does look quite random. Now, how does that persist through a factory reset? Where is it stored so it can be put back in, in the, into the device? Does it come from the MAC address or is it stored somewhere else? It'd be interesting to find out. So, back through to our Linux terminal. We're going to SSH into the device. And I set the password to something suitably rubbish and we're in. Now, if we run PS, the first thing we can see there is we've got user sbin host apd. So host apd acts as the access point and it's been given this config file var run host apd phi0.conf. So what we're just going to do first off is have a look at that file. So I'm just looking at that file. It looks fairly standard there. It sets some capabilities and this is this is commonly done on decent Wi-Fi devices. That's to make sure it complies with certain standards. Um, and as we go down there, we've got the WPA passphrase, SE1I8Q5R. Further down, we should have the SSID of RUT955CAFC. So that's where host APD is getting it directly from. But you'll notice that that file was in var run. So that's created at runtime. Now this is an OpenWRT based device. So what that means is it takes a series of UCI config files and translates them into config files for various things it runs. So they're stored in etc config and we will have uh, wireless, wireless, yep, yeah. okay. So here you go, config Wi-Fi device, Wi-Fi interface, option, SSID, RUT955, Option key SE1I8Q5R. So it's already set in there. So essentially, when the device boots, these settings get taken from these files and put into the, the host ABD config. But how does it get in there in the first place? Which is a good question. So it has been factory reset. Now, there's quite often a folder called UCI defaults. When you factory reset a, a Lucy based interface such as OpenWRT, um, it has a series of scripts that it runs when it first boots. Um, they're stored in UCI defaults. The thing is it deletes them after it's booted and it's deleted them because it's booted. I think this is where it's going to be getting the, uh, the default config from. Right, so what I'm going to do is type mount and we can see that the, the root file system there is SquashFS. SquashFS is a highly compressed file system, but it's read only. Um, so you can see that there, it's mounted RO, read only. Now what they do is they overlay another file system. So there you can see we've got MTD block five on overlay, type GIFs to read write. Then that overlay will get put onto the system. So that GIFs to file system contains the changes um, whereas the squash FS contains the original thing. Now that means, I think, that the original script, the original UCI defaults will be in squash FS and they will have been deleted, but only in the GIFs. So if we go into overlay and then upper, we've got the files that change. So if we go into ETC, we have UCI defaults. And there you go. Now they're purple, which looks odd. We do LS-A. You can see that the special flag there is set to C, which is like, I think, a character device or something. In an overlay file system, that means those files have been deleted. If I say try doing cat teltonica, 
you'll see it can't open it. it it's not really a file that just flags that it's been deleted what we need to do is we need to mount the squash fs file system now the squash fs file system is probably mtd3 or 4 okay let's start with 4 it doesn't actually have it there um, so let's make uh, mtd block 4 mount slash dev mtd block 4 and then we'll pop that in there oh whoops hmm, did that work yes it did okay so though we got some errors um it's worked so we've mounted mtd block 4 which will be we do mount you can see there it's squash fs so we've got to the original file system for now we're going to etc and then uci defaults we have the original uci default script so where's it getting that wi-fi key from so we've got mnf info manufacturing info network UHTTB network VLAN. Let's just grep Wi Fi LEDs. So that's the LED setup. No, let's try WPA. Let's try key. Okay, so that's not right. Let's see what's in manufacturer info. So these will be scripts, so hardware info, product info code, let's scroll through this really quick. So UCI here, this tool allows you to edit those settings. Generate random hash, it's taking something from DevU random hashing it, I wonder if that's some kind of ID that's used somewhere else. Okay, so looking through this, we have manufacturer code where's it getting this data from hmm it's not jumping out at me oh wait 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 what's this spin manufacturer info name that gets the name the product code Hmm, let's give that a go. Okay, so there we've got a name. That's the name, the model number of the device. Let's try that without a parameter. Okay, yep, so then Mac, we get a Mac address. So there's that CAFA, so that's the LAN one. The name, WPS, WPS. Oh, that's going to be the WPS pin. No, batch. Hmm. Sim, sim pin. Wonder what that is. Oh, sim the sim pin. Okay, so we haven't got the Wi-Fi password there. Where's it getting that info from? Let's just try something. Strings. So remember, I'm running on a limited system at the moment. Um, strings S bin manufacturer info. Displays the manufacturer info. Yeah, okay. I kind of thought this would be the case. So when you get help, Mac, Mac, F, blah, 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 but it misses out that secret one at the bottom there, Wi-Fi password. So I reckon if we do manufacturer info, Wi-Fi pass, there we go. So what is manufacturer info doing to get? Oh, we don't have S trace. So manufacturer info is a binary, um, I think. Oh, whoops. Let's cut that out. Yeah, it's a binary. A file isn't present on this to tell us quickly. Somehow that is getting info like the serial number and stuff like that. Where's it doing that from? So you've got the Wi-Fi pass. What were the other ones we had there? Name. Yeah, SM will give us the serial number. So somewhere that's pulling the stuff um, 
from various places. Right, okay, so we've worked out that host APD has its config and then that's generated from the etc config wireless file which is then copied across that when the device boots. I don't know where that's set up yet. I can't see that in these UCI defaults that we've got from that, that mounted squash FS. But you've seen how we can get those files that have been deleted um, from the overlay file system, which is quite helpful when we're doing things like this. I think in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to dig into what MNF info does, where, where it's getting that information from. I think it's going to be pulling it from another one of the flash blocks. Uh, one, two, three, maybe one of those. And allowing access from the operating system. The question is though, what is actually running manufacturer info to copy that Wi-Fi password across? Anyway, sorry if this was a bit meandering. I'm, I, I'm not always going to have the quick answers to these problems, but if you like this, press like, press the notification bell, subscribe, and I'll be back with more in a few days. Thanks.